Nayib Bukele, the self-proclaimed world's coolest dictator, was elected again. And, you know, newsflash though, Nayib, you only got 83% of the vote as of the writing of this story from the BBC, when you claim you had 85%. So take that. Take that, Mr. Bukele, President Bukele. This is a man who's thumbed his nose at the, the biggest and best and brightest leaders we have in the world, the IMF, most notably, the organization that you can read uh, Alex Gladstein's book about the financial repression, uh, John Perkins' book, uh, I forget the name of Alex Gladstein's book. You can, you, he has a book called Check Your Financial Privilege, which is amazing, and then a new one that just came out about the IMF and its repression of going in and, and laundering uh, money using cash they print up out of nowhere and then in debting countries and taking their resources. So you can go read that book or John Perkins' book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. He has a newer version of that. That's exactly, basically, if there's one thing that Nayib Bukele has run on, it's weeding out corruption and, and thumbing, thumbing his nose at the kleptocracy, the, the elites in power that have branded themselves the kingmakers, gods of the world. And, you know, it's not come without controversy. Obviously, the mainstream media everywhere has attacked Bukele for a handful of years now that he's been in power, said everything's going to fail, the Bitcoin bet's going to fail, all these things are going to fail. Come at him for the the imprisonment of thousands, it looks like tens of thousands of gang members. They have a massive gang problem in, in El Salvador. And one of the most unsafe countries in the world now is one of the most safe countries. And again, trust but verify what I'm saying. Go look at these statistics for yourself. And and there's nuance to that. And I'm not a, an El Salvador expert. And I'm not going to get into what the constitutionality of all these things is. The people there seemingly like him. Now, can we audit the elections? Are they super fair? Are they using paper ballots? Are they counted in one day? It seems like they are. Uh, it seems like they're counted very quickly, unlike here in America. Um, I'm not positive if they use paper ballots or not. I would imagine they are. I think in Argentina they did. But again, things, these are things that you, you can verify on your own. You can go check them out. You know, the end of the day, my job is to report on the context shifting news that's happening. And this is a win. The, the moral of the story is there's a win again for truth. It's a win again for the opposite side of the aisle. It's a win again It's for a narrative that's not spun out of the World Economic Forum, that's not spun out of the IMF or, or a British Parliament or MI6 or the CIA. That's what it's a win for. That's what it's a win for, period. And at the end of the day, you have Marxists everywhere that their their whole thing is and justify the means. Now, are we on the on the good guy side, the the light disinfecting darkness? Are we going to say, hey, the end justify the means? No, that's generally not how we operate. And quite honestly, that's why the good guys seemingly seemingly lose in the short term a lot of times because you're not always fighting fire with fire. But the good guys win in the long term. In the long run, that's the beautiful part about it. Time always tells. One of my favorite sayings: Time always tells, and truth will prevail. It always does. So. We will see. We will keep monitoring this. Bitcoin uh, holders here are, are loving it. Uh, there are, but again, like I said, there are many controversial things and good things that Bukele has done. So it's not the point. The point isn't to say one thing or another. It's to thumb your nose at the establishment, at the legacy media, at the old school, crumbling fiat narratives, the crumbling fiat legacy institutions. These things are going to by the wayside. The uh, some Somali current event news about Ilhan Omar the other day, the representative here in America, trying to come after El Salvador. And Bukele was just like, cool, we don't want your, that's that's great. I'm, I'm really glad that you are telling me that I'm not doing a great job because I don't want your endorsement. That would actually be embarrassing if I had your endorsement. I mean, just the, the nature of Bukele and some of these younger leaders, whether it's Javier Milei's or whether it was Brexit a few years ago or Donald Trump, there's, there's a, a silent majority that most people do not want to understand. They do not. They want to put their heads in the sand. They do not want to understand that the will of the people is not towards centralization and collectivism and Marxism. That's not what it is, especially in the West, especially in America. It is not geared toward that. Humans are meant to be free, and they're not meant to be controlled top down. Humans like leaders. They want leaders, but they don't want to be controlled in, in cages or digital prisons or to be what they can or can't do or how they can or can't think. That's not how humans work. And you can try to nest with it for a while but it does end up it's like a pushing a ball under water and then eventually it comes up and it has to come up for hair and breathe and light disinfects darkness so again the bitcoin bet seemingly paying off they have just under three thousand bitcoin on their treasury and they haven't fallen 
just like the media said they would. And Bukele has pointed this out many times. He's come out and just ravaged the legacy media, the legacy institutions like the IMF, World Bank, saying, you know, America, you who are you people? You're constantly collapsing. You're constantly in chaos. Who are you? You're not. You're not the shining city on a hill anymore. You are not the 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 arbiter of 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 peace and 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 Republican form of government. You know, democracy and free votes. You are anything but that. So you have no right to be. And that's that's something that I believe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I believe the U.S. could do no wrong in that sense. Well, we're the best. You know, clean a shirt, you know, dirty whatever, clean a shirt and dirty hamper, right? And now, now there's a truth mechanism. There is almighty truth. There's all alpha and omega in spiritual world and that we are not the end all be all. I am not the center of the universe. None of us are the center of the universe. And there's also on the human side, there's now an ultimate, ultimate truth detector in the form of money and communication. And it's, it's the Bitcoin time chain. It's TikTok next block every 10 minutes. And it, it puts in digital stone that truth. And it's an auditing system. And it is constantly reassessing and auditing itself every 10 minutes and giving us the truth. And truth will set you free and truth will prevail, period. And not everyone knows it yet. And it takes time. So congrats to President McKelly. And more, more importantly, congrats to truth seekers and truth fighters, freedom fighters. Congrats to people holding Bitcoin. Again, the bet in truth, the bet in ultimate truth, that this protocol, this money, the soundest money, hardest money that humans have ever discovered, will continue winning. You don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you. That's a lot of what Bitcoiners bet is. You can't stop Bitcoin. You can do whatever you want. China's tried to ban it, tried to get it out many times, and it just keeps coming back. It is truly the honey badger. It is the cockroach. And it's the apex predator asset that continues to eat all the other assets, and it takes time. But people will continue to see what Nayibu Kelly sees, what the Max Kaisers see, what the Michael Saylors see, what the Stanley Drucker Millers and the Paul Tudor Jones and the Tim Drapers and the Bill Millers and on and on and on. Poor people alike, along with billionaires and trillionaires. Elon owns Bitcoin as well, even though he doesn't talk about it. So. We're, we're in an incredible time, and it's an incredible time to be hopeful because we have the truth mechanisms on our side, spiritually, and then also in the human world, in theology and in science. It's amazing. It's truly amazing, and we are here for it. We are here for it. Get yourself prepared, though. The more we can be independent and resilient, the more or the less government we need in our lives, and that's the, the less daddy government we need, the less big brother we need. So food, energy, water, storage, land, Bitcoin, gold, silver, and firearms, protection, and community, building up community digitally and physically. It's the number one thing that we can do to survive what is coming. And it's a it's an unbelievable time to be hopeful and all the abundance that's gonna come on the backside. This is amazing. I can't help but smiling. So please share yourself. The algorithm hates truth. Question everything in boldness, even the existence of God himself. Trust but verify what I'm saying. And it's not financial advice, it is freedom advice. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.